Why do these serial rings stick to each other while floating on the surface of the milk? Is it because the manufacturer of this American breakfast cereal adds some magic glue to the Cheerios? This doesn't seem to be the case since we can see that soap bubbles, paper clips, thumbtacks and even floating coins stick to each other while on the surface of the water. There must be a general principle behind this sticking mechanism. Have a look at the Cheerio effect in action in this video. The Cheerios are lighter than water so they float on the surface. When they come closer they rapidly snap together and form a cluster. Now here comes a paper clip. Just dropping it onto the surface of the water won't let it float since it is heavier than water. But when we very carefully place it onto the surface, surface tension will hold the paper clip on the surface and it will float. In the meanwhile you can see how the Cheerios form even larger clusters. We add some more paper clips and you can see how they snap together just as the cereals did. Note that the paper clips and the Cheerios do not snap to each other. Now it is time to break the surface tension by adding some soap. You can see that the paper clips will drown to the bottom of the container. The detergent molecules have lowered the surface tension of water so that it cannot support the weight of the paper clips anymore. Just as the Cheerios, floating soap bubbles like to stick to each other and the walls of the glass or ceramic container. What we could not see in the videos is that the water around the Cheerios is curved upwards. This is a result of the buoyancy of the Cheerios and also the good wettability or small contact angle that water forms on the surface of the Cheerio. For paper clips, the opposite is the case. Their weight forces the water meniscus around them to curve down. We have seen in the video that Cheerios attract each other. Also paper clips attract each other. But paper clips and Cheerios repel each other. Let's do another time, this time with floating thumbtacks. Here you can see quite nicely how the heavy thumbtack will curve down the water meniscus. We now add a second thumbtack. Just as the paper clips, these two thumbtacks will stick to each other. Next, the plastic cap of the thumbtack has been removed and placed onto the water surface. The plastic cap is lighter than water and consequently curves up the surface of the water. When we add another heavy thumb thumbtack and push them towards each other, we make an astonishing observation. The two thumbtacks repel each other, just as the Cheerio and the paper clip have done. Since the plastic cap of the thumbtack is the material in contact with the water and we have seen it now once in an attractive configuration and the second time in a repulsive configuration, we can exclude the effect of wetting to be the main driving force of the process. What has changed upon removing the metal from the thumbtack is the density and consequentially the, whether the water surface was curved up or curved down. When two Cheerios meet each other, they first see their upward curved meniscus. Since the Cheerios are lighter than water, they want to slide up that meniscus. Now the paper clips. When they encounter, they first see their downward curved meniscus. Since they are heavier than water, they want to slide down this meniscus. They can only slide down the meniscus generated by a second paper clip, but they cannot slide down the upward curved meniscus of the Cheerios since they are already at the bottom of that meniscus. They cannot climb up this meniscus since they are heavier than water. Thus, paper clips and Cheerios repel each other since the water around them is curved in different directions. Here we add a whole pile of tiny carbon particles to the surface of the water. They encounter while floating on the surface of the water and with time build up a giant cluster of carbon particles based on the Cheerio effect.